Okay, let's talk about jet lag. <laughs> let's talk about jet lag, moms. So I want to provide you with some information, um, what they don't tell you about jet lag as a travel mom. So jet lag is a common challenge for travelers crossing, of course, time zones. And for travel moms, it can be particularly demanding as you juggle the needs of your family along with your own. Okay, so while general advice on coping with jet lag is widely you know, available, there are specific insights and strategies that are less commonly shared, but crucial for travel moms. So here's what they don't tell you often uh, about dealing with jet lag as a travel mom. So I wanted to share some information and some tips with you on this. So the first thing is your body and mind need extra time to adjust. So far as with this, what I mean, uh, the first thing is personal recovery takes longer. So moms often prioritize their family needs over their own. That's why, you know, I talk a lot about self-care and this leads to, it, 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 it leads to delayed personal recovery from jet lag. Also, the constant demand of caregiving can make it harder for your body to adjust to the new time zone. Another thing under your body and mind needing that extra time to adjust is mental fatigue is very much real. So jet lag affects not just physical energy, but also mental sharpness. So it it makes it challenging to manage daily tasks and decisions, okay? And then you may feel more ir irritable or emotionally drained, impacting your interactions with family members. So you ever have those moments where something has, you know, occurred throughout the day and you just, of course, you're trying to focus on other tasks and other things that you need to get done, but something has occurred that has made you very, cranky, right? And you're trying to manage doing what you need to do for the household. You know, your children coming to you saying, mommy, this, mommy, that, I need this, I need that, or trying to get your attention without trying to blow up, right? So it's real. It's it's very much real. Um, Two is children's jet lag can compound your own. So children adjust differently. Okay, so each child responds to jet lag uniquely, with some adjusting quickly while others struggle longer. So if you are a parent that has two or three kids or more, you know that each child, they have different attitudes, they're different ages, so they may, they're all going to adjust to jet lag very differently, okay, if you are all traveling for a family adventure. Younger children, especially babies and toddlers, often have more disrupted sleep patterns, which can impact your own rest and recovery. OK, so if you are dealing with toddlers or babies, um, especially if you, you know, I'm thinking about my son because he's been sick a lot lately. You know how it can if he's not sleeping good. Mama not sleeping good. Daddy not sleeping good. Right. So it can it can interrupt the rest that you need in order to be prepped and ready to go the next day. You know, that's, that's just an example. So um, nighttime wakefulness. So you might find yourself dealing with children who wake up in the middle of the night, further disrupting your sleep and making it harder for you to adjust. Um, unexpected behavior. So kids may become usually unusually cranky, clingy or hyperactive as they cope with their own jet lag, adding to your stress. So you might be trying to figure out, okay, what's going on with, with my child? Because they're kind of acting, you know, you know, more clingy than usual and I'm doing everything, but they just continue to seem like they're just so not able to get rest, which is going to in turn allow you and the dad or the, the other parent to not get rest as well. Okay. Um, number three is routines are harder to maintain. So what do I mean by this is disrupted schedules. So jet lag can throw off meal times, night uh, nap times, and bedtime routines, 
making it difficult to maintain any kind of normalcy, okay? So it can throw some things off, right? And you kind of just have to kind of go with the punches when that does happen. Um, keeping children on a schedule while adjusting to a new time zone can be a significant challenge. Um, so I know this topic is... <laughs> It's probably not the topic you want to hear, but um, it's a topic that needs to be talked about because jet lag is very real. And I think that's one of the things, unless you're just one of those people that loves to travel for 14 hours or eight yeah. hours, or even if it's, you know, small, three hours, four hours, you know, and you're traveling with kids, it can still be a challenge. Um, balancing act. So finding a balance between adjusting to local time and keeping kids on a schedule that avoids uh, overtiredness is tricky. Um, you might need to be more flexible with routines and adapt to what works best in the moment. So maybe you're one of those type of people that you plan everything out, but we all have things that happen in our lives that are spontaneous, especially when you have kids, it, it just happens out of nowhere. And you kind of have to adjust to, you have to adjust basically. Um, the next thing is self-care becomes even more critical. So your needs matter too. So it's easy to overlook your own needs when focusing on your family's adjustment. But self-care, it is crucial for your well-being and energy levels. And prioritize getting rest, staying hydrated, and eating well, even if it means asking for help or taking short breaks, okay? Um, so there comes a time when it comes to when we have kids, it can be one kid, it can be two, it can be three, it can be, way, you know, more, that we have to ask for help. And sometimes, you know, if you're one of those people where it's very difficult for you to ask others for help, when you have kids, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Because, <laughs> look, you have to get stuff done and you can't be in too many places at once. So it's never it never hurts, especially if family is willing to help to ask for help. Um. Emotional resilience. So dealing with jet lag can take a toll on your emotional well-being, leading to feelings of uh, frustration or overwhelm. Practicing mindfulness, you know, taking short walks or simply having a quiet moment can help maintain your emotional balance. Uh, the next one is flexibility and practice are key. I feel something right over here now. <laughs> My arm is red. Anyway, um, so with this specific one, flexibility and patience, um, expect the unexpected, okay? You know, when you have kids, you got to do that. So accept that there will be disruptions and that not everything will go according to plan. And I'm one of those type of people. I love to plan. I, I'm a planner. I'm, I, I like to, you know, do stuff. I, I got uh, I got to get stuff planned a week ahead of time. You know, if it's something, especially if it's a trip, months ahead, you know, months ahead, ahead of time, stuff like that. I'm a planner. Some people are spontaneous. They can, you know, do the, do the thing. But I do also understand that there will be times or things that will happen that will happen. And it, you know, it just happens and it's not planned and I have to adjust. I have to, you know, decide what I'm going to do and adjust to it. Right. Um, so it does happen. Um, be flexible with your expectations and plans can reduce stress and help you cope better with the situation. So that's another thing I will say. I can be a worrier. I don't know. It could be my sign, you know, because of my sign, my but I, I am that, you know, and I kind of would be like, no, I don't think I am, but I kind of own it and accept it. But I, I'm also one of those type of people as well that even though I might be a worrier, I, I'm also one of those type of people that is very optimistic. And if something does happen in, in my life that I feel is uncomfortable, I try to see how I can adjust and try to cope with it or try to handle it the best way I can to see a resolution or get uh, get out of that uncomfortable situation and how I can get back on track if that makes sense. So yeah, that's pretty much how I am. 
and practice with yourself and your family. So allow yourself and your family time to adjust without pressure or unrealistic expectations. So this probably might be easier said than done, but, you know, because not only are you dealing with the effects of when you're dealing with jet lag, but you have your kids going through it. You might have your spouse going through it and you, you all have to try to figure out, okay, how can we work this out where, you know, the kids are not as cranky or my husband is not as fussy or I'm, you know, trying to, to do some self care or maybe, you know, maybe you can take turns. Maybe you can decide, okay, who's going to watch the kids while I go and take a nap. Who's going to watch the kids while I go take a walk? Who's going to watch the kids? You know, just planning and trying to adjust and not try to make things even more complicated by being upset, causing a ruckus, if that makes sense. Um, and just, you know, be patient, basically. Um, understand that everyone adjusts at their own pace and that it's okay to take things slow, okay? Um, so yeah, when you're you're dealing with jet lag, you gotta deal with cranky people. Um, so the next one is practice strategies you might not have considered. So layered napping. For both you and the children, short naps can help manage fatigue without completely disrupting your sleep schedule. Um, you can consider uh, staggered napping where you rest while the children are engaged in quiet activities and vice versa. Uh, snack smart. So keep healthy snacks on hand to manage hunger at odd hours and maintain energy levels. Um, also avoid he heavy or sugary foods close to the, you know, bedtime to promote better sleep. Um, and then hydration hacks. Uh, staying hydrated is essential for combating jet lags, jet lag. I was saying jet lags, but managing family hydration can be challenging. So you can use fun, reusable water bottles for kids and encourage regular sips of water throughout the day. Um, next is handling jet lag upon returning home. So double adjustment. Um, the return journey requires another period of adjustment, which can be just as challenging as the initial transition. So give yourself and your family grace during this period and allow time to, to get used, get back used to your home time zone, okay? Because it's, it's going to be an adjustment probably for a day or two, maybe a couple of days because you, you made it back home and you're not, you have to get back used to that time zone that you're in now that you're back home. Um, slow reintroduction to routine. So don't rush back into your regular schedule immediately, even though you are back home and you're, you're like, I got some things to cross off on my to-do list. Kind of take it slow, ease into it gradually to help everyone readjust. And then plan for a few low-key days upon returning to help manage the transition smoothly. The next one is emotional support for yourself. So acknowledging your needs. It's important to recognize that managing jet lag while taking care of your family can be emotionally taxing. Let me tell you something. Jet lag is real, people. Okay? Um, seek support from your partner, you know, your spouse friends or family and don't hesitate to ask for help when needed. And then communicating with your spouse or significant other. So share how you're feeling and what you need to better manage jet lag with your spouse. And then work together to support each other and balance caregiving activities or responsibilities, shall I say. So this was pretty much it. This seemed like this was a jet lag guy, but it was honestly just to be very transparent um, when talking about jet lag, because it is real when you're returning home. And it's even more when you're doing like a family trip, you know, because not only are you thinking about yourself and maybe, you know, I would say yourself and spouse, because, you know, you probably in the past did a romantic getaway, but now you're doing a family vacation where it's yourself, your spouse or significant other and the kids, right? So you got a few people you got to tend to. It's not just your needs, but it's the needs of your other family members, okay? 
So in conclusion, uh, jet lag as a travel mom presents unique challenges that require careful management and a lot of flexibility. So understanding that your recovery might take longer, prioritizing your self-care and being patient with your family's adjustment are key to navigating this common travel hurdle. By adapting practical um, strategies, remaining adaptable and seeking support when needed, you can make the transition smoother and enjoy your travel experiences more fully. So I hope that me talking about this, you know, this important topic, talking about jet lag, jet lag helps you to plan ahead, you know, be prepared for the unexpected and uh, know what to do when you are all back at home and just take it, just take it slow. Don't try to rush it, you know, try to get rid of some of that crankiness. If, if some of it have came about, you know, um, and just, just take it slow. But I hope this helps you. Um, if you are planning a trip and you need some assistance, you don't want to plan it alone and you're planning a, a family vacation, um, you can definitely reach out to me to schedule a discovery call. Um, and we can get on the phone to talk more about it. I will make sure to leave the link um, in the description so you can go ahead and schedule your discovery call. And until the next time, take care, moms. Bye. Are you a busy mom who dreams of traveling but struggles with the planning? Join a community of moms just like you in my exclusive group where we share travel tips, family-friendly destinations, and even romantic getaway ideas. Plus, you'll get access to insider deals and personalized advice. Want to join us? It's super simple. Reply yes now and let's start planning your next adventure.